When learning how to crochet, it can be pretty daunting when you see the vast array of crochet stitches that are out there. So today I'm going to remove the overwhelm and show you the three stitches that you need to master. These three stitches contain all the techniques you need to go on to do any crochet stitch that's out there. So let's jump straight on in. So the very first thing we're going to learn is the chain. Now I can't think of a single crochet project that I have made over the last 12 to 15 years that hasn't needed a chain in it somewhere. Chaining is the absolute foundation to most crochet projects. So to begin, we're always going to start with a slip knot on the hook. There are many different ways to make a slip knot. For me personally, when I make a slip knot, I have the tail of my yarn just in my hand and I wrap it around my finger. So I'm just wrapping the yarn around my finger and then I cross it backwards like that. And then I rotate my finger back around and I've got two loops on my finger. Now I'm going to put the hook with the hook bit, with the little grabby bit. This is where the yarn will be grabbed from facing down. I go underneath that first loop on my finger and then I grab this yarn. As you slide the hook along your finger, you'll naturally grab the yarn, but I'm going to go ahead and pull that through. And then I take my finger out and just pull it. Then pull the yarn that is attached to the ball. So not this little tail, the yarn that's attached to the ball and that knot will slide up to your hook. So that's a slip knot. I'm not counting that as one of these three stitches because it's just a slip knot. So for chaining, chaining can be surprisingly tricky when you're first learning how to crochet. Once you've mastered the chain though, it will be something that you don't even think about how you're doing it. You'll, it will be second nature. So we're going to yarn over the hook. I'm just wrapping it over the hook like that because I want it to secure into the little grabby section of the hook. So I'm just yarning over. And then what I find to be really handy is rather than use the hook to pull through this loop on your hook down here through the slip knot that we've made, I find holding onto that slip knot and pulling that so I just have the yarn secured in here and I sort of pull the hook whilst holding on to the slip knot tail to pull the two together. Other people find it easier, again, wrap the yarn around your hook to lift with your finger, which is totally fine. You can lift this loop on your hook physically over to chain. You do what works for you. Eventually, you'll find that you yarn over and hang on to the chains that you've made and you just pull with the hook through like that. But I find that comes with practice. So this yarn over and using the hook to do all the work is definitely something that you'll, you'll do later. If you're an absolute beginner, absolute beginner, then I find manually yarning over and a combination of both. I'm not moving my hook, I'm moving the chains over. So my hook is completely still. Yarn over, hold on to the chains to pull them. Or as I mentioned, yarn over and you can physically pull the chain with your finger right over. Eventually, your yarn over and use the hook to pull that through. But this is chaining. So yarn over and you're pulling the working yarn through the loop that is on your hook. You don't need to worry about the neatness of your chain, particularly when starting. Just get used to the action of yarn over and pull this through the loop that's on your hook.
So the second stitch we need to learn is the single crochet. This is fantastic because not only is it used in a lot of projects, it gets you used to the action of working into stitches. So now we've just chained and you're just forming chains that just hang in the air. This time we're going to be working into the chain and then completing a row and then I will show you how to work into a stitch on the second row. Now whenever you're crocheting this loop on your hook does not count as a stitch. You only count the stitches that you form afterwards so with the chains it's just these chains that are hanging down it's not the loop on your hook. That's just your yarn waiting to become a stitch. It isn't a stitch yet. Now to begin a single crochet we're going to skip this very first chain here. Now the reason for that is you need enough height. The single crochet is quite a short stitch and by skipping that little chain there it means that it's all up in the correct height. So we're going to work into the second chain. So ignore that first one into the second chain into whatever bit of the chain you find easiest. I'm just going to work into this top loop here, but it really doesn't matter. The first step is to put your hook and insert it into the chain. To pop your hook into that chain. Then we're going to yarn over and just like with chaining, you're going to pull this yarn through that first loop. So you'll have two loops on your hook. This first one here, the one closest to your working yarn, is the loop of the chain itself. And we're just like when you're chaining, we're just going to pull it through. So pull it through to the front. So you have brought your yarn from the back. This is the yarn that's attached to the ball from the back to the front. And you will have two loops on your hook. Now to complete your single crochet stitch, you're going to yarn over again. So again, just yarn over. And then you're going to pull this working yarn, the yarn that's attached to the ball, through both these loops that are remaining on your hook. So just pull it through both of them. And that is a single crochet stitch. So into the very next chain, if you're not sure where the next chain is, if you pull the stitch you've just made, you'll identify that chain. So you can see we just worked into that one. So you can move over to the next one. So move to the next gap here. Just pop your hook in, so insert it from front to back. Yarn over, your yarn will already be at the back waiting for you. So just yarn over and we're going to pull it through the chain, just through that very first loop, which is the chain. Pull it through. You'll have two loops on your hook. And then to complete the stitch, we're going to yarn over again and to pull through both those loops. That creates your second single crochet stitch. So we're going to work into every chain all the way along your little sample piece, however many that is. Insert your hook into the next chain. Yarn over. Your yarn will sort of naturally be there anyway, but you want to be bringing that yarn from the back through the chain to the front. Then you'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through those two loops. Keep working this single crochet stitch until you get to the end of the chains that you made. So once you have run out of chains to work into, you should have a little row of single crochet stitches. So to move up a row, at the start of a single crochet row, you will chain one. Now that chain does not count as anything. It's just to get your hook to the same height that your stitches will be. And then we're going to turn our work. So just flip your work like the page of a book and then we're going to work another row of single crochet stitches. Only this time we're going to be working into the top of the single crochets from the row below. So you've already worked into the chain. Now this time we're going to be placing our hook underneath these two V's. So I'm just going to pop my hook 
underneath the two Vs of the top of the stitch. So instead of one loop that you would have had from working to the chain, you've now got two loops plus the loop on your hook. So we have three in total. Now nothing changes other than where we're putting the hook. So just as you did in the last row, again, yarn over, your yarn will naturally sort of be hanging there waiting for you. And we're going to bring this working yarn through these two loops, often referred to as Vs. So we're going to come through the V of the single crochet stitch. So come through the first two. So you're just bringing your yarn from the back to the front. You'll have two loops on your hook just as before, yarn over to pull through both those loops to complete your single crochet stitch. Now we're going to work this all the way along. If you have your work facing you, you'll see the little gap where you're going to be putting your hook. And if you rotate it around, you'll see it goes underneath this V of the stitch from the row below. So work your stitches under the Vs. just as you did in the last row. So we're going to work our single crochet stitches all the way to the end. And you can keep practicing the single crochet stitch so you get used to the action of placing your hook into a stitch, yarning over, coming back through to bring the yarn to the front of your work and then completing your stitch. In, grab the yarn at the back, bring it through, yarn over, complete the stitch. Now the third and final stitch that if you can get this one down, you can literally do any other crochet stitch because they're all just combinations of the same actions. We're going to move on to the double crochet stitch. Now I personally think the double crochet stitch is the hardest one to learn. There's a lot of steps to it, but as I say, practice and it will become second nature. Now to work a double crochet stitch in rows, the easiest way when you are first starting is to just go ahead and chain three straight up. So one, two, three. Then turn your work. Now these three chains have brought your hook up to the height of a double crochet stitch. It is a much taller stitch than the single crochet. For now, all we're interested in is mastering the stitch itself and not whether or not you have gaps or any of the additional things you can go on to learn. We're just going to practice the stitch. Now, because these three chains are nice and tall, we can use them as a mock stitch, so like a pretend stitch. So in that instance, the stitch you just chained from, so this is my stitch here and these are my three chains, we can skip over that one and ignore it completely. We can then go ahead and work into the second stitch. But remember, we're just practicing the stitch. We're not making anything. It doesn't matter what our edges look like. All we want to do is get the stitch down. So I'm going to work into this second stitch, but again, if it's easier for you to work into the first one, go ahead, no one cares, <laughs> there's no right or wrong. So for a double crochet stitch, it is very similar to the action of a single crochet, but we have an added step. And that added step is yarning over before you insert your hook into the stitch. So I'm going to yarn over 
before I've even done anything. Then I find that just placing my finger on those two loops just helps keep them in place. Then we can insert into the stitch just as you did with the single crochets. We're going to go underneath the V's of the stitch from the row below. I'm still keeping my finger on those two loops. One, two, these two, keeping my finger on them. Then we're going to yarn over the hook just as you did with the single crochet and pull this yarn back through the stitch. You'll see I didn't take my finger off those two loops. You can pull it up a little bit, give yourself some room and you will have one, two, three loops on your hook. Now we're nearly there, we just have two more steps. So we're going to again place your finger on these loops just to keep hold of them, yarn over and pull through two of those three loops, just two. So pull through two loops, I'm keeping my finger on that first one, and you will have two loops remaining. Again, yarn over and pull through those final two loops. So that is your very tall double crochet stitch. Now, as I mentioned, you don't need to worry about this start here. We're just practicing the stitch and no one cares what this little sample is going to look like. <laughs> so we're going to do that again working into the next stitch. Yarn over and place your finger onto those two loops. Then go into the stitch, yarn over at the back and bring that through to the front. You will have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and we're going to pull through the first two only. So yarn over and come through these first two loops one and two. You'll have two loops remaining on your hook, yarn over and pull through both those loops. That forms your double crochet stitch. As I mentioned, I personally think this double crochet stitch is the hardest to learn. Once you have got this down, there is no stopping you. I promise you will be able to do any crochet stitch. So we yarn over, Place the finger on those two loops so they don't come off. Go into the stitch, yarn over at the back. Your yarn sort of naturally waits for you. Pull it through to the front. Three loops on your hook, yarn over. Pull through two, first two loops, and then yarn over and pull through the remaining two. Lots of steps to this stitch. Yarn over, into the stitch. Yarn over at the back and pull that yarn to the front. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops. And then yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops. That is your double crochet stitch. Continue practicing the double crochet stitch. And eventually, with lots of practice, this will become second nature and you won't need to worry about it. So the chain, the single crochet stitch and the double crochet stitch, those are the three stitches that you need to learn. Once you can crochet these three stitches, there will be no stopping you. You will be able to crochet any stitch. They are all just combinations of what we have learnt in these three stitches. So enjoy your crochet journey and I hope it is a craft that you stick with. <laughs>